And so this is Ali Ayaz, and we are going to do clinical methods today. And we will start with the most basic clinical method, which is uh, a visual equity. Now, there are a few principles that need to be followed for visual equity. The first one is which chart you want to use. So there are different charts that can be used. We can use single letters, and we use the Snellen chart. We can also use what is called as ETDRS charts, and they go through a transgression. Basically, it varies uh, on the patient which one he can see. Uh, normally, what I like to do is uh, I like to follow the ETDRS chart. So to do this, you have to be at a certain distance. A standardized distance is about uh, six meter or 20 feet. And before you start, you want to see whether the patient can see anything. So first, with both eyes open, you ask the patient to see the chart, and uh, I'm going to ask the patient as to how many lines he can see. So if he can see all of those lines, that means his vision, at least in one eye, is completely normal. And then we progress with doing each eye separately. We can use a mask occluder, which is going to automatically cover the, uh, the eye which you are not testing, and then you just rotate this and check the other eyes. Uh, with patients and with doctors who don't have a cluder, you ask the patient to cover his eye with his hand. And uh, I'm going to first show you what is the wrong way of covering the eye, and then we're going to show you how we have to actually cover it so that there's no uh, cheating going on. So uh, Irfan, can you just cover your eye? So when he covers his eye, he's using his fingers to cover the eye, and if you see, he can peep through this, which is not a good sign. So the way that we're going to do is we're going to ask him to keep his palm on the eye, but not press the eye, just so that there's no way that he can look through the palm. There's no way that he can look around the palm. And so we can get a more uh, crisp and reliable testing. So I'm going to first ask him to cover his left eye with his palm and he covers his left eye, and then I'm going to ask him to start reading. And uh, the way to do it quickly is, I am going to ask him to read the middle letter of the topmost line, and uh, then go vertically down. So if I can you start reading? Uh, D. And then go vertically down. D and R. Now he can't read, if he can't read below R, I'm going to check whether R was an estimate or, or was a real thing. So I'm going to ask him to read the R line horizontally. B, Z, R, C, N. So once he's done that, uh, I am going to ask him to do the same with the other eye and follow the same routine. So I ask him to read the middle letter. And if you have a kid who can, or, or, or a person who has a good memory, then he's probably going to memorize those. So we change it, and now he goes on. Once this is done, we also need to interpret this. So in case of Irfan, he was able to read the fourth line from the right eye from a distance of 20 uh, uh, feet or six meters. So the way that you are going to document this is, you are going to do visual equity and you are going to do write the distance as the numerator and the line that he read as a denominator. So he read four lines, which is a 20 by 40. Alternatively, you can also write this in meters, which would be six meters, and he read four lines, so it is 12. With the left eye, he read 20 by 30, which would be a 6 by 9. Now, this is a gross visual equity. So imagine that I ask your farm to cover his left eye with his palm and ask him to read anything uh, on that visual equity chart. And he says, can you see anything? Okay. So he says he can't see anything. I am going to then do the same with the other eye. So I'm going to ask him to cover this eye and ask him whether he can see anything. No. And he says he can't see anything. 
this is the case, then I'm going to make him stand and I'm going to move him uh, slightly forward. So if you're doing it in meter, I'm going to uh, move him to five meter and then I'm going to ask him to cover the eye again and try to read. And he still can't see anything. And then I'm going to ask him to move another meter forward. Still, we're about a one meter away from the, from the equity chart and I'm going to ask him to read it. And now if he can see the line D, H, and C. So he can read the topmost line. And if that is the case, we would write it as visual equity at a distance of one meter reading the topmost line. So it could be, it would be one by 60. And if you want to do it in feet, then you convert it. Now let's assume he cannot even read this. And I am going to ask him to cover his left eye again when I'm testing the right eye. And I'm going to show him fingers. He can see the fingers. How many fingers do you see? Three. So he sees three fingers at one meter. And then I'm going to move slightly further back and then ask him to do it again. And then I'm going to move further back and ask him whether he can see them. Now, if this is a point where he can see them, which is about three meters, so the way that we are going to write this is visual equity of the right eye is counting finger at three meters. Now let's assume that we uh, that while testing his right eye and he covering his left eye with his palm, I ask him to read at this point and he cannot. So if he cannot do this, then I'm going to come closer and move my hand in front of him. And when I move my hand, I will ask him whether he can see the hand. Uh, could you see the hand? Yes. If he can see the hand, we will write counting finger hand movement. Now the problem with this is that when even when you have your eyes closed, uh, you can always feel your hand moving forward. It's actually the perception of hand being moved, being translated into uh, they seeing it. So I don't really trust this test, but uh, it is expected that you do this. Now imagine that I do this again, and I move my hand, and he cannot see it. So if he cannot see this, I'm going to take an ophthalmoscope or any other light, and then I'm going to shine a light in his eye, asking whether he can see the light. So could you see the light? So he is able to see this light, which means there is a perception of light. But I also want to see whether this perception of light is present in all the four quadrants. So what I, after doing this, I'm going to ask him, where do you see the light? Excellent. And where do you see the light now? And where do you see the light now? Yeah. And where do you see the light now? So when I've done this, I will write this as visual equity is perception of light with projection in all the four quadrants. I'm going to shine a light again. Can you see it? Yeah. Yes. So he can see the light. And I'm going to once again uh, shine it in the four quadrants. Can you see it? So he can't see it here. Can you see it here? And can you see it here? Yes. Can you see it here? Yes. So he cannot see it in the upper quadrant. And I will write this as perception of light with faulty projection in the upper quadr two quadrant and positive projection in the lower two quadrant. Now, if he was not able to uh, perceive this light either, I would write it as visual equity NPL, which means no perception of light. Uh, if you want to read more about this, you can go to Ophthalmology Explained and read chapter one, which covers the whole visual equity uh, section. Thank you.